The grade 11 trig equation videos are going to go in the sequence that I would expect you to be taught and so they're going to evolve. What you have to do in the first kinds of equations will change as the type of question changes and as, as the expectations and skill level changes. So be very careful with the wording of a question and make sure you know what level of equation you're being expected to do. Okay, so part one is going to talk about splitting your answer into the quads because by now you've figured out that sine, cos and tan are negative and positive in two quads each. The way you're going to know that you've got to do this is that the question is going to say to you that theta is an element of 0 to 360. It won't be one of those ones that goes negative 180 to positive 90. Those are coming in later videos. Those will be general solutions with specific answers. So here you're going to know that you split into quads simply because you're basically given the fact that it only goes from 0 to 360 in the first lot of quadrants. We're not going around again and we're not going backwards into negative ones. Okay, so you're going to identify that you've got to do this because of the restrictions that are given. You're going to get out one or two solutions because you might be given a restriction that is less than that. So if, for example, you get given a restriction like uh, from 0 to 90, you'll get out one answer. Or if you're given a restriction from 90 to 270, something like that. Look, mostly it's going to be 0 to 360, but I want you to identify the fact that this, uh, this way, this operation for doing equations is going to be enough if the restrictions they give you are within those boundaries. So anything that fits within those boundaries will work with splitting into quads as well. So this is not a general solution, okay? It's just splitting into quads, probably the first kind of equations that you get taught to do in grade 11. Okay, so I'm starting off with a really simple one and I'm going to change color so that you can see what I'm doing with the information that I'm given. A lot of trig is about secret extra information that is given to you um, and it's right in front of you but you wouldn't necessarily think about it. So for example cos theta is a positive half right but would you even think about the fact that it's positive I mean it's just there but the positive tells you that in the cast diagram you know which quadrants your answer is going to be in and for cos it's going to be quad one and quad four. And I do these diagrams every single equation. For me, there is never a time when you don't have to do one. I know a lot of people like to do them in their heads, but with trig, there's so much to remember. You just want to root yourself and put down stuff on paper as much as you can so that you know what you're doing. Okay, at this point, I'm going to shift cos and I'm going to get out my answer. If you'd like to show that step, you can do that. Okay, and I'm going to get out 60 degrees. And that works just fine because now my theta is 60 degrees. Okay, and so in grade 10, that's as far as we would go. But now I'm going to say draw a box around this thing and know that this is your reference angle. That means that if it's in quad 1, that's your answer. Now I'll example here does include quad one also quad four so clearly 60 is the answer for the quad one version because cos is positive but from this perspective we now have to split it into the quads okay so now i'm going to say in quad one and this is a copy and pasting exercise i'm going to have theta is 60 degrees and in quad four, which is the other one, I've got to accommodate. Quad four is the quad where you take 360 minus your reference angle and you get the answer. So once again, those reduction formula come into play. So in quad four, I've got to say theta is 360 degrees minus my reference angle. So there I'm going to have 300 degrees as my answer and those are my two answers when all I've got to do is split into quads and where I have the restriction of 0 to 360. I'm going to put those two answers into curly brackets 
to set up an expectation of how you do these things going forward when they get more complicated. I'm using curly brackets to list. I'm not showing an interval like there. I'm showing this is all the answers that theta can be. Theta can be 60 degrees and theta can be 300 degrees. And for now, when I'm splitting into quads, I'm only going to have one or two answers. For my second example, I'm going to do exactly the same one except make it negative. Okay, and now it's perhaps a little clearer that you've got to do something else because you can see the negative and you didn't just have to add in a positive. But the thinking is going to be exactly the same. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use that negative to tell me what quads my answer is in. Okay, I'm still going to have the restriction here of 0 to 360 for the purposes of this example. And I know that cos is negative. And sometimes I ask my students to write that down. Or as a little sidebar comment to themselves. In trig, I find that making your own sidebars really helps root yourself in what you're doing and what the possible steps could be. So cos is negative. So in my cast diagram, I'm dealing with exactly the same example as the first one I showed you, excepting now it is in quad two and three. So my answer is going to split into those two options. Okay, so I'm going to get exactly the same answer out because when I do my shift, I'm not going to include the negative. And that's possibly where your brain starts feeling a little bit fried, like you're not sure why I would do that. And it's because I want to get the reference angle. Okay, so the extra comment I'm going to add here is when you shift, you need to ignore the negative. Okay, so now I'm going to take my half, not negative a half, I'm going to shift cos it, and I'm going to get out 60 degrees again. Okay, so I'm going to get theta is 60 degrees, and again I'm putting a box around it, and this is my reference angle. I teach my kids to write that down so that it is very clear this is not my answer. And in fact, because I'm dealing with quads two and three, this will never be in my final answer. It is merely a reference for what I use once I've split into my quads. Okay, so I'm going to go into quad two and three. In quad two, quad two is the 180 minus. So I've got to deal with a place where cos is negative. So I'm going to say theta equals... 180 minus the 60 degrees okay and then I'll I'll finish that up and get my answer so theta is 120 degrees and in quad 3 quad 3 is the 180 plus quadrant so theta is 180 plus my reference angle which gives me 240 degrees and there are my two answers I'm going to say finally theta is an element of this list of numbers which is 120 and 240 and nothing else fits into the parameters I was given which is that theta goes between 0 and 360 moving on to one that's got a whole lot of extra bits in it just to clarify, it works exactly the same way as the really simple examples. And this is an example that I've tweaked a little bit from my grade 10 video. So if you're unsure how to deal with all these different additions, so the, the coefficient of sine, the coefficient of theta, the adding on 10 and so on, go back and have a look at those because it'll help you understand that you're just solving an equation using bed mass backwards. Okay, so I've just got to unpack this. Again, I'm going to have the restriction that theta goes between 0 and 360. And now I'm going to unpack this equation. Okay, so first of all, I'm dividing by the negative 2. So I'm going to have sine of this angle 
and that's going to give me negative 0 comma 8. I'm ready to do the shift function because I've got sine of an angle which is a bit complex but it's still just an angle equals a number there's a negative okay so at this point I'm going to choose my quads okay so I know that sine is negative so in my cast diagram sine is negative in quad 3 and quad 4 so I know where I'm going and it's at this stage when you know what function it is and whether it's negative or positive see at this point I couldn't really tell because I've got negative 2 sine and, and, and there's a number I don't know whether it's going to work out negative necessarily so I first got to get it so that sine of the angle equals a number and if that number is negative or positive that will tell me which quads this thing goes into so at this point I'm going to shift but I don't include the negative when I shift so I'm going to shift sign the 0.8 without the negative okay and then I'm going to get out a long answer 53 comma 13 you'll see it on the calculator it's quite a long number okay so at that point what I know is that 3 theta plus 10 degrees gives me this and this is my reference angle okay don't solve at this point do not solve your reference angle is 53 comma 13 degrees and that is how it's going to go to the quads okay so I know I'm dealing with quad 3 and 4 so in quad 3 I've got 3 theta plus 10 degrees right and in quad 3 I'm supposed to go 180 plus my reference angle so it's 180 degrees plus my 53 comma 13 keep that answer in your calculator and then just use the answer button to get it back right now I can solve so now I can say 3 theta equals let's move the 10 across 180 plus the 53 minus 10 degrees when I add those numbers up and subtract them I get 223 comma 13 with all the other decimal points and then I'm going to divide by 3 and I'm going to get out 74 comma 38 degrees once I round it off now let's go to quad 4 in quad 4 it's the 360 minus quad so I've got 3 theta plus 10 degrees and that will give me 360 minus my reference angle so the same procedure again I'm going to minus the 10 on that side and that gives me the 296,87 and then when I divide that by 3, I get out 98,96 degrees. Okay, then to finish off my answer again, I can make my curly brackets, write down my two possible answers. This question type doesn't really come up in this section when you split into quads. I'm foreshadowing this idea that you don't actually solve in this step that you deal with it later because it's going to come up and it's going to be very important so don't get too stressed about this question 1c um, if it's feeling a very shaky right now then wait until you've been taught further sections and then you'll see that this idea of splitting into quads at this point starts making a little more sense